So, okay, uh, welcome to lecture 15. So, we'll continue with uh, uh, some more applications of the Feynman rules. So, just to recap ourselves, so what we have been doing so far is that uh, we started off uh, at studying interactions. So, and then uh, after st uh, studying the, inter uh, meaning to study the interactions, we have started with looking at, we just took a Lagrangian and imposed a symmetry. The symmetry automatically, the symmetry conserves some quantity in the case of, uh, in this case, it is essentially the uh, uh, electromagnetic charge and this automatically conserves your symmetry and this conservation of symmetry locally automatically brings in interactions into your theory. Now, so the basic steps are essentially choose your Lagrangian. So when you're choosing your Lagrangian, what I mean is actually you're choosing your particle content. So particle content. So particle content means what, uh, it's in, uh, in the case of QD, uh, uh, in the case of QD, uh, what it means is that you choose uh, your, uh, uh, say for example, you choose uh, uh, L to be a function of uh, electrons and photons. So photons are typically represented by gamma. So this is gamma. That's it. Your Lagrangian is a function of both uh, photons and electrons. And that's it. So what you choose was your particle content. And then the second step, what we chose was uh, what is your symmetry? The symmetry is just u1. So u1 local. So, like I said, this is just the uh, local U1 theory means, it means that uh, there is a charge, e uh, there is a phase change, t power t of x, it's a unitary theory and we said that because we need unitary uh, operators because we want any symmetry operator is essentially because of the Wigner's theorem, any symmetry operator is represented by a unitary theory in quantum mechanics and that's precisely the reason why we choose this to be the a, a unitary operator essentially. So all the symmetry operators are you know, unitary operators. So this is a phase rotation we have chosen. So once this is done, we have the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian LQD is equal to I psi bar uh, del slash minus M psi minus one by four of mu A. mu nu f mu nu. and that's it this is your theory of qd in that sense now the next step would be to from this uh, uh, lagrangian what you get are the feynman rules the feynman rules are not something which are independent they come from this lagrangian so given this lagrangian you get all your feynman rules so the list of feynman rules we got actually uh, step number three is a list of Feynman rules. Okay, so the, the list of Feynman rules from the Lagrangian, and then you can directly compute the amplitudes of various processes. So you can compute the amplitudes of various processes. Like the example, what we did was uh, for the case of, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, we did um, uh, two scatterings. Uh, one was this uh, Bhava scattering, and one was this uh, 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 molar scattering. Molar scattering is essentially electron rippling on an electron, and we can do the reverse also. What happens if we have a positron? Rippling? And there are some, uh, so I want you to do this because I, I want to show that what happens if you apply the C operator on a given process actually. So that's, uh, say there are some properties of QD theory, okay, which you can see, understand it from, also from the Lagrangian, also from directly studying the process. Okay, now let's look at uh, some, uh, some process other than uh, say 
and the ones which you have looked at, we have started looking at writing them. So the other process uh, is, uh, this is it's a little bit outside QED because uh, you need uh, also muons, any other charged particle, okay? So let's not think about just uh, electrons and photons, but suppose if there is some other charged particle, say for example, a muon, it could be a muon, it could be a pion, whatever it is. Pion is slightly complicated. We'll come to pion in a second, actually, we'll come in uh, scalar QED, when we do the scalar QED, uh, in the later part of today's lecture, we will see about the pion. But right now, let's look at, uh, uh, say, uh, another fermion. It could be a muon, it could be something else, it could be any other quark or something. So let's see what would be the diagram for a process. The simplest process is E mu going to E mu. So both of them are negatively charged, say for example E mu and E mu, both of them are negatively charged. So what would be the diagram which would contribute to this scattering? Okay. So electron, uh, so you just think about it and then I electron goes to electron and while going it exchanges in gamma and muon goes to muon. So this again given P1, P2, P3, P4. Now this is the only channel, this is the three channel process. Now I claim that this is the only diagram possible because I say that there is no diagram of this type, say electron going to a muon, okay, uh, and the muon going to an electron. This kind of diagram, I say, is not possible in the Lagrangian. Okay, this kind of diagram is not possible. Uh, uh, okay, so why is not possible? Because the Lagrangian doesn't allow uh, a, a okay uh, a, a doesn't allow a direct coupling between electron and a muon. Okay. There is no direct coupling between the electron and so what does it mean? So what does it, why does the Lagrangian doesn't allow? So the Lagrangian what we write down is let me just delete this section. Uh, uh, the Lagrangian we write down is LQD. LQD is okay psi bar i i okay let me write it as alpha alpha b slash minus m psi alpha minus 1 by 4 f mu f mu the photon field will not change and alpha is equal to e mu so that means it's the same field which has the which comes because the reason why this happens because the kinetic term typically doesn't mix different particles. Okay, the kinetic term doesn't mix different particles. So this means that psi e bar i del slash minus n e psi e plus psi mu bar i del slash minus n mu psi mu okay minus 1 by 4 f mini f mini anyway that doesn't change essentially okay so the kinetic term here essentially is this term which is with the del slash it doesn't mix typically different flavors even if it mixes you can always go into basis where this is diagonal because we need it to be diagonal because we want to make sense about free particles right for example uh, if we want the free Lagrangian to be uh, because the only solutions will be possible free solutions only will be possible when it is diagonal in the sense that it's diagonal in mu space okay 
Yes, otherwise the solutions uh, you cannot interpret free particles actually. There will be some sort of mixture of electrons and muons and stuff like that. Then you cannot say you cannot distinguish between an electron or a muon. So, so the kinetic term because that is the solutions which we are using for the free particles. It should always be for the same field on the left hand side and the right hand side. So that means if it's an electron on the left hand side, it should be a right hand side also. It should be an electron. Same thing for a muon. So that you can interpret what its mass is, and now that uh, what its mass is, what its uh, coupling, uh, also now and its solutions, free particle solutions. Now because the interactions come, because the interactions come along with the kinetic term, along with the d slash, okay, the small d slash, the well slash. So the capital D slash, the covariant derivative comes along with the d slash. Automatically, the interactions also will. Uh, will not mix electrons and muon fields. The interactions will not mix electrons and muon fields, and that's the reason. That's the reason why you won't have, say, for example, uh, uh, diagrams uh, like what we have seen earlier. Essentially, like uh, uh, so, there is no U channel. So the diagrams which we have seen here, okay. Uh, so the U channel diagram. Uh, the U channel diagrams will not be there. So, this is the U channel diagrams, and these will not be there. Okay, the U channel diagrams of what we have seen earlier, so essentially this kind of diagrams. So, electron neon scattering has only one diagram. Now, you can replace some neon with, say, quark or uh, whatever you want to do, any charged particle essentially. As long as it's a fermion, and you'll see that it's uh, uh, it's uh, what do you call it's uh, it, its amplitude is more or less the same essentially. So there's only one free channel process. Now let's write its amplitude. So this is electron. This is electron. This is muon. This is muon. And this is, let's say this has a uh, charge Q, uh, I mean, moment of Q, P1, P2, P3, P4, Q is equal to P3, P square is equal to say, P3 minus P1, P4 square, that is equal to P4 minus P2. So the amplitude would be, because this is an incoming electron, so this is the U of the electron, U bar of the electron, i.e. gamma mu u of the electron minus uh, e term uh, mu nu by q square okay this is one box say for example now you have u of the mu bar u bar of the mu bar i.e. gamma mu in u of the mu So this is your I n. Okay. So now you can easily write it down. So you can express it in terms of the momentum states. So u bar of e of p three. So i's will come three i's and then with the minus sign. Uh, so that will be four. Uh, x squared plus one. So it's i by q squared. Uh, and then there is an e square. Uh, that means you can't. So this is i e square. That is good. Just check the signs. Uh, I may be mistaken. Let's do it slowly. So this is uh, u e bar p three gamma mu u e of p one times. This is uh, ue bar means uh, the u of the electron field. Okay, the u of the electron field is different from the u of the muon field, right? Essentially, this is this u mu bar of p4 gamma nu u mu of p2. So, this is.
this is the muon field. Uh, this mu should be not confused with the Lorentz mu. Okay, this mu here means essentially the mu of the uh, the muon field with the definition of u square given by here. Okay, with the definition of the q square given by here. Now uh, this is. Um, uh, this is one example. Now, if I did, just replace, uh, say, for example, uh, uh, so now the, the what I did here was that I didn't take care of the charges here and the couplings. Okay, say for example, in principle, um, the vertex contains the charge of the particle also. Say for example, I didn't care about the charges because both the electron and muon have the same charge. Okay, but suppose if the electron and muon don't have, I mean, suppose if you are if not interacting with the electron, the electron is just scattering of the quark. Okay, but then you have to take care of the charges because then instead of IE, you also have the Q of the charge of the electron and the Q of the charge of the um, of the quark, which are not the same. So there will be a difference. In, so there will be a, a Q coming of the electron charge times the electron. Uh, uh, the, uh, the quark charge. Say, for example, the same amplitude for this diagram. Say, E, E, so Q, uh, sorry. So, let's say uh, uh, what quark you want to say. For example, let's take U quark. U, U. Okay. Now, first question, is this process possible? Okay. Uh, the first question is, is this process possible? Okay. This is also a part of the assignment, which you will get uh, and then the second question is, uh, how will you write the Lagrangian? Okay, how will you write the Lagrangian? Uh, Lagrangian, and what is that? So what is the amplitude of this process? Okay, uh, so this will be an assignment question which you will get it today actually. And so, uh, so the, the, this is the point is that electric charge, this coupling here, uh, the quark doesn't have the same charge as the um, electron. Quark is positively charged, both of them are positive. So this has a charge two by three, plus two by three, not minus two by three. Okay. Okay. So, how does it happen? Okay. Now, instead of a quark, you can think of a simpler example. This will be useful for us uh, uh, later on uh, when we study. Um, this is a process. You can repeat, say, for example, you can repeat the um, Rutherford scattering experiment. Okay. But instead of alpha particles, you heat a proton, say, for example. So you think um, uh, the reason why I'm remembered of the uh, Rutherford scattering as actually because in the limit, uh, in the non-relativistic limit, this turns out to be the Rutherford scattering amplitude. This uh, amplitude turns out to be the Rutherford scattering amplitude. Okay. Okay. In uh, non-relativistic limit. Um, the emu scattering is uh, the root of four scattering. Okay. Now, okay. 
now uh, the, the, if you run this rutherford scattering experiment it is essentially you are fitting alpha particles so uh, material right so instead of fitting alpha particles now let's hit electrons on photons for example so this is something else it's not rutherford scattering but it's something else it has a name we will come back to this name this is called deep elastic scattering so the basic idea is that you hit highly energetic electrons on a proton okay okay so this is an experiment in which you hit very high relativistic electrons okay on a proton so how do you draw the diagram okay so this diagram would be electron going back to an electron and then proton it's proton this is elastic scattering because uh, proton is remaining as a proton actually but if you want to find the structure of the proton if you don't want to, the proton to remain as a proton actually you want it to be completely disintegrated okay this is the elastic scattering limit of uh, this is not uh, deep elastic scattering okay so this is a photon but anyway now proton again just to make you the thing proton has a positive charge and electron has a negative charge but they still exchange the photon this is a, a, almost similar to the electron positron scattering okay but you don't have the s channel diagram so here we don't really have the s channel diagram again because it's not the same particles and antiparticles only particle antiparticles can annihilate say if you remember the bhava scattering essentially we'll come back to this so uh, so say for example compared to bhava scattering so where there is an annihilation diagram so this is e minus e plus E minus E plus. So this side of an annihilation diagram exists. Okay. Okay. This is the annihilation diagram. Which exists in Bhava scattering. Such diagram doesn't exist here. Okay. But uh, so this diagram doesn't exist because particle and antiparticle of uh, only um, uh, so, if you want to, uh, a particle will annihilate only with its own antiparticle. Say, for example, electron will annihilate with only anti electron. It won't annihilate with a proton or some such thing. Okay. It won't annihilate with something. Okay. It's only it annihilates with its own antiparticle. That's important to know. And that's the only thing which the Lagrangian of the QD allows. Like I said, because the photon coupling is only within, uh, with this thing. Okay. Uh, the photon coupling is only with its own uh, the same uh, field on both sides okay and now coming back to this point uh, so so there is no annihilation diagram uh, what happens in the deep elastic scattering we will come back to it when you are doing uh, QCD so this is an electron electron that is the elastic limit this is the elastic limit now but if you have a deep elastic scattering proton uh, Okay, I'll draw it in more careful way. So this is the proton set, for example. If the energy of the photon is very, very high, this is the proton. So let me just put it in some color. Okay. So this is a quark. Okay. And this quark is ejected out. So essentially scatters off the quark. The quark is ejected out and the rest of the thing just forms a big jump. The photon disintegrates. The photon disintegrates. So essentially this is an inelastic uh, process. This happens when Q square is very very high actually. It's pretty large. And the photon just disintegrates in the inelastic limit. So if you start uh, with a simple this has a completely different uh, uh, amplitude. You won't be able to write the amplitude. 
uh, I mean, this is slightly complicated to write down too because uh, you need to know the wave function of the quark inside a proton at a given moment time. So this is quite complicated. Okay, but the elastic limit, the elastic limit which we are looking at, say for example, electron, uh, electron uh, um, interacting with a proton. This is just has one diagram, which is this the T-channel diagram. Okay, okay. We'll also we'll have the just the same elastic. Uh, Amplitudes, except uh, like the e, 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 uh, electron muon scattering, okay, electron muon scattering amplitudes, except in the case of the quark, if you have, okay, if you, instead of the proton, if you have the quark, you have to put the charge of the quark carefully. Otherwise, it has a, the elastic limit of the electron proton, proton scattering, E p scattering. The elastic limit is um, very much similar to E mu scattering essentially, okay. Uh, which depends upon the uh, momentum difference between uh, the electron, uh, the outgoing electron, and the uh, uh, incoming electron. That's it. What is the momentum difference? Okay. As this momentum depend, uh, as this momentum increases. So, for example, as an electron is more and more energetic and it loses a lot more energy and starts hitting the proton with much much heavier. Uh, energies the pro, uh, the photon is very very high energetic and it starts hitting the proton with very, very high energies the proton um, it starts seeing the deeper structure of the proton okay and then it just disintegrates essentially it just disintegrates but this is it comes under the qcd part essentially we won't really deal with it this is about the structure of the uh, proton and the quark cell everything essentially but this is important that this interaction is also like a QCD interaction. That's the point, essentially, because this is again in the quark quark uh, uh, QUD interaction. So, what I mean to say is essentially it depends upon the QCD in terms of the um, the the, the uh, it's a technical word is a structure function. It's the amount of the uh, the amount uh, the the quark fraction of the proton so we'll deal with it a bit later but all these three three things like for example electron muon scattering and uh, electron quark scattering except for the charge and the electron proton scattering have roughly the same amplitudes except for the uh, charges essentially except for the uh, meaning uh, the amplitude structure is exactly the same except for the charges and the momentum essentially uh, the amplitude structure will be roughly the same, which we had computed uh, for a given moment and for a given uh, 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 for a given electric charge. So, if you keep changing the electric charge of the other particles, say for example, so muon, you use a tau. Okay, tau would have other complications because it may not be long wave and stuff like that. Muon mm -hmm. itself is also not very high, uh, long wave. Okay, uh, but if it, you boost it, it is sufficiently long wave. And so, uh, similarly, the tau would be even less uh, long wave actually. So there are other issues, but uh, you can, uh, 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 for a quark, say for example, because there are no free quarks, you can write this amplitude, but actual process correspond to uh, this thing would be uh, in the elastic limit, just electron proton scattering. But if you want really the, uh, if you want to really see the quarks inside a proton, what you have to do is increase the the momentum of the uh, of the photon which is hitting the uh, which is hitting the uh, the proton the photon should be very very high energy okay and the structure function of the or the wave function of the uh, the quark inside a proton would start playing a role essentially how much is the wave function and stuff like that essentially will start playing a role Okay, now that we have come to inelastic scatterings, um, let's look at a little bit more uh, other inelastic scatterings, uh, which are also equally interesting. Okay, um, the, the main inelastic scatterings which are interesting are uh, uh, what, is, what is called a pair production. And then, uh, Pair emigration. Uh, 
these two are uh, important processes which we need uh, to uh, study them a little bit. These are inelastic, both of them, because um, the initial states and final states are completely different. It's not really, okay, they depend upon the moment. And, okay. okay, so let's look at first the pair production. Production. So pair production involves two photons coming in and giving rise to electron. Now the first question you would ask is why do you need two photons? Now, I wish we had a live class because I can ask this question. Because why do you need two photons? Because we know that the electron and positron directly coupled to one photon, right? Now then why do you need two photons to produce uh, an electron positron pair? Okay. Good question. So what's wrong with the diagram, say for example, so what's wrong with the diagram, like this, what's wrong with the diagram of this type, So you have a real photon, it just disintegrates into, uh, say if it has enough, um, so the only thing which this just requires that the photon frequency or the momenta should be equivalent to at least, uh, say for example, uh, greater than or equal to 2m, because you need to produce uh, uh, at least uh, um, a pair of electron and positrons, right, essentially. Then, why doesn't this happen in nature? I Meaning, why do you need two photons? What's wrong with it? Essentially, is there some conservation law which is being broken by this particular uh, diagram? Okay, this doesn't happen. Okay, I'll give you the answer that it doesn't happen. So, if so, what would be the conservation law which is broken by this? Essentially, so okay, this is also an assignment question. Okay, but I'll do it a little bit. Okay. Um, okay, tomorrow's in, uh, okay. Uh, not uh, in the next one, but I'll do it in the next one. Okay, of course, I'll, uh, I'll ask this question in the assignment, but then, uh, or in the quiz, so, but then I'll do it in one of this uh, contact hours. Maybe. So, but think about it. I just want you guys to pause and think what could be the thing, firstly. Have the momentum or linear momentum, the energy or spin or anything, think about it. Okay, so if so, what would be the diagrams for the pair elimination? Uh, pair creation. So you have two photons coming in. Okay, and then Is this diagram sound nice actually? Now, what channel do you call this diagram? Essentially, is it S channel? Is it P channel? Or what is the channel you call this? Okay. This is nothing but P channel. Okay. Now, is this possible that the pair, any uh, pair, uh, okay, I just want to. I think it's there. Uh, I, I just want to check if these things are given in brackets, or if I had to do it in. Uh, ah, they are given in brackets. Okay. Uh, this is page two forty six. So you can look into it. Because uh, I, uh, like I said, I have been using brackets as the main textbook. But I was just worried whether you had to go to some other corner of the book, which does it like is it feasible or something. But I didn't want you guys to do that. Okay, anyway, uh, is there in Griffiths so well and good? And fine. Okay, so 
this is two photons coming in and this would be what e plus because uh, it's going out and but the uh, the charge line is opposite to the direction of the going out and then this is uh, the charge line is like this so this is again an outgoing particle so this would be an imman so you create a proton and now you can flip this diagram let's say for example electron uh, and uh, uh, so you can say this is p1 p2 p3 and p4 okay this would be diagram one you also have it u channel how will you draw the u channel say for example you exchange um, uh, e minus and e plus uh, sorry mm, and p3 and p4 sorry for example So we you draw and draw one. Okay, and so yeah. Uh, yeah, or you can exchange actually the I'm just thinking maybe it's uh, uh, uh yeah, uh, so okay, one second. So mm -hmm. You put it this way and you put it this way. Okay, fine. So this is uh, and then okay. Oh uh, no, one second. I just check the this is long term states, so long term sign. So okay. Now this is P one, P two, P three. And P4. So this would be E, E, this is that one. So this would be E plus. Uh, so what did we have? E plus, E minus, and so on. So this is the process in which you have two photons going to a pair of electrons and positrons. Now, um, now these arrows are fine, right? Because you have the electric charge going in a single line. So you have to be always be careful. But if you either give it this way, it goes the opposite direction. So both these things we put E minus as P3, E minus as P4. Okay, fine. So now uh, the, the, these amplitudes you can write down. So for example, you can write the cross amplitude of yourself now that you know. So I am would be for example V of uh, so And now the, the main difference here which comes is that, uh, okay, um, because the initial states are no longer uh, fermions, but the initial states are incoming states are photons, okay. So their, uh, uh, their uh, wave functions are completely different. So suppose if I want to write this particular case, say for example, the I'll start. I would prefer starting from say U, um, U bar of P four minus I e gamma mu. Say for example, because now then there is this uh, uh, the propagator of the electron. The propagator of the electron would be given by some. Let me just say Q. So minus I Q slash minus an electron times then this is v of p3 okay but then there are these two essentially there are these two uh, wave functions sitting here one corresponds to uh, 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 say p1 and another corresponds to p2 
So, and in, in writing this, I also have not considered the second uh, wave function, oh, wait, second coupling. So, this is also IE gamma nu. So, and then there is also the wave function of the uh, photon coming in. Photon wave functions, I have to write it down as epsilon mu in okay, epsilon mu. Uh, where is it written? Essentially, it's in the terms of function. No, it doesn't do so. So, done here. Okay, good. So this is would be okay. epsilon mu. So here it will be epsilon mu of p one incoming. The other one would be epsilon mu of p two. Okay, let me write it down more explicitly. Uh, not for this one. So. So let me okay, okay, let me just keep this. Ah, good. So let me write it down as um, so I am is it okay? Maybe I'll put a mark somewhere also. So I start with, uh, oops, um, I just wanted to write the fermion part first and then sandwich it between the two photon things. So, so let me write the fermion part first. So we will start with V bar of P4 minus A E gamma mu slash Q slash minus a mu V of P3 minus okay, let me put this also inside minus a mu gamma mu V of P3. Oh, um, I should write it's too small, but anyway. Okay, uh, this is epsilon mu. Let's see if we can just move it a little bit. Okay, this is not mu. Some oh, it's finally moved. Okay, so this is epsilon mu, it's epsilon mu p one, epsilon mu nu p two. So this is the amplitude. Now this is the first time we are seeing um, uh, what you call amplitude with uh, mm, initial and final state the wave functions coming from photons. Essentially. Okay, uh, of course. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Then, uh, okay, you can again simplify. You take the eyes out, and then. Uh, Take the commons inside and stuff like that. You can okay. Now you can okay. Um, so you have uh, so uh, the epsilons are 
the wave functions of a photon. Now let's look at for this one. With this one, you all you have to do is to interchange uh, P3 with uh, P3 with so this if they call it as I am one. One, I am two would be I am one such that uh, P3 is interchanged. And, uh, and that's it, you get uh, the same amplitude uh, and, uh, for this diagram. So atom, as you can see. Okay. So the total amplitude would be I am one plus one. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at um, the other uh, possibility. This is called uh, uh, this is called uh, uh, pair creation. Okay. This is called pair creation, and the other one is pair elimination. A part of the diagram which we have seen. Uh, essentially. Now, the, the I want to make one important point that uh, uh, one important clue on this uh, the same question uh, uh, is that uh, okay. I think about it. Uh, Okay, one more uh, sub question of this one is this: Is this possible? Is the above diagram possible if uh, Q is photon is virtual? What happens when photon is virtual? Uh, this is one uh, addition I want to give essentially to the same question. Okay, so this process uh, will this be possible if the photon is virtual? So it has something to do with photon being real or not? Okay, so let's look at pair uh, oh no, we said uh, pair creation, right? So let's do pair annihilation. This is the opposite of this process which we had done so far. So you start with Again, electron, and now you start with a positron. So you have a diagram always like this because, as I said, the charge line should always go like this, and then it's simple. Okay, this is your T channel process C plus A minus. And then the opposite also will happen. So, meaning not or what I mean, so, so the cross term will also happen. So, this is E minus E plus. Now, let's just assign the momenta P3, P4, P1, P2, P3, P4. So, uh, so if there is whenever there is an um, uh, electron positron come, so they come together and not give not one photon, but instead give two photons actually. Okay. So, what what is the minimum energy of this photons? Uh, uh, okay. What would be the minimum energy? So, for example, if both of them are rest, okay, the minimum energy of the photons would be half of uh, many half of 2 mu, which is essentially mu. okay so this is true for any fermion say it's still a QED process instead of electrons and uh, now say for example you can take electrons and positrons you can take muons and anti-muons tops and anti-tops okay 
but there could be additional diagrams because of uh, some other process which we'll see much later in the course but uh, these processes are always possible so uh, this, uh, these diagrams will always be there say for example because that's the reason why we need to insist on this theory say for example if you have uh, any other quark an anti quark okay i just wrote it down in terms of q bar so we'll always have these diagrams A more simpler example would be thinking in terms of proton and antiproton and uh, proton and antiproton comes together and then uh, they annihilate for example two protons their masses will be uh, much higher okay you can think say say for example the fermions could be uh, i'll try for any fermions say for example and antifermions these are all direct fermions if they are marana it doesn't happen okay these are all direct fermions like for example muons taus tops all possible quarks and so on and so on so, so uh, now you can simplify this by using various tricks uh, all these amplitudes which you have looking at but uh, uh, okay we uh, uh, okay so i'll mention that say for example the amplitudes all these amplitudes can be simplified using casimir's trick and trace formula and trace formula you can actually do that uh, there are something called the Casimir rules, case for okay, and also um, the properties of the direct solutions, properties of the direct solutions, okay, uh, direct moment of space solutions. So you can use all of these things and simplify it and get a nice form for this. And now you also have the free space part for a two to two process, which you have done it uh, uh, in the realistic case, essentially in the. But two to two scattering you had done that two to two phase space okay but i'll give the same thing uh, repetition for your assignment uh, for this assignment actually so this two to two process uh the phase space how do you do the phase space for the two to two process just using the general formula which we covered in the, in the first lectures essentially we'll do uh, for say electron mass scattering because it has only one diagram uh, that's the assignment actually then we can complicate it okay for, so but the physics part uh, essentially that you can take any um any particle say for example which is a dirac fermion and its antiparticle they will come together and there is a qd process which converts it to two photons okay not one photon but in terms of two helium photons actually now um, i just want to uh, before going to the other topic about higher order corrections so uh, i'll ask uh, i want to just one because we started with the scalar qd okay so what happens in the case of scalar qd so the scalar qd the lagrangian sqd we wrote it down we'll just look at a couple of processes there also then you phi minus m square phi divided by phi minus 1 by 4 f mu and f mu. Now if we expand this, we said that the L interaction contains two parts. Okay, the L interaction contains two parts. One of them is essentially uh, phi a phi divided by mu phi a mu and then e square phi divided by phi a mu a mu. Right, there are two terms. Okay. Now, if you look at the Feynman rules for this case, okay, the Feynman rules for this particular case, it will be uh, com uh, very different compared to the case of uh, QD. So the process and everything would be completely different compared to the case of QD purely because there is a del mu sitting here. So there is a del mu sitting in the coupling with the uh, first order of 
process in the first uh, in the first order interaction term which is e dependent just uh, dependent on the gauge coupling only once this contains a del mu the del mu means uh, it is momentum dependent because uh, del mu is essentially a momentum uh, it picks up the momentum of these two states essentially so if you look at the feynman rules uh, the same thing say for example uh, in the incoming particle would now just have the wave function which is essentially one times the plane wave which we are not writing which will be con uh, put together into the delta function which is the phase space part okay uh, and the uh, which is represented say for example by phi the out, uh, incoming antiparticle will have the opposite this will have minus i p x say for example the plane wave this will have plus i p x incoming antiparticle would have also the same wave function which doesn't have any structure say for example so this will have um, again one the plane wave part anyway we uh, put all this thing together in giving you the delta function uh, which is essentially delta uh, the energy moment of conservation so okay uh, p1 plus p2 equals to p2 minus p2 okay that energy moment of conservation which we had written uh, in earlier case as a phase phase part now so this is uh, uh, essentially the incoming particle incoming uh, antiparticle outgoing particle and outgoing antiparticle okay fine this is all fine but then uh, what will happen to the vertex so so the vertex depends upon the momentum say for example if phi uh, which is the wave function say, say the incoming wave function uh, uh, has a momentum p and this has a momentum p prime so this wave function is not ie gamma mu but instead this will be i e p minus p prime okay let me write it as p mu okay so this is a momentum dependent coupling so the amplitudes in the scalar qd are completely different compared to the amplitudes in ordinary qd will be related okay in the limit uh, when the spin interactions are taken care of but the momentum difference uh, will make a difference say for example um, uh, uh, so e e one may think that okay in the limit when I just measure the spins this will uh, be the same but it's not exactly the same because of the momentum difference you understand okay okay um, this happens at the tree level uh, uh, this happens at the tree level whereas in the momentum dependence comes at one loop level for the coupling in the QD case so that's what I wanted to make difference okay this happens at the tree level meaning in the sense these all this process which you are looking at are tree level process I'll come to higher order process in a second and uh, that, that's precisely the reason why I'm uh, insisting on this difference between QD and scalar QD and the second vertex in scalar QD is actually a higher order process. This QD is second order in the coupling constant. So this would be for this one this has no moment independence and is just i e square but then it is second order in coupling constant so it won't appear in any of the tree level process so uh, so this won't appear in uh, say any tree level process so let us take a simple case let me just uh, um, given understanding, uh, meaning why I'm insisting that there is some difference in the case of uh, alpha scalar QD and QD. So let's just take a pion. 
So Payon, charge Payon, say Py plus. And we'll try to do the same kind of process like in the case of uh, the QE, say for example. Let's just draw the diagrams at least to understand uh, what's happening actually. So the first one would be charge Payon. Uh, pions are always, uh, I mean, scalars are always given in terms of uh, dotted lines, right? For example, charge pion scattering, okay, on another charge pion, say for example. So this is equivalent to the molar scattering in the case of this one, okay, but there is a Q here. Now, um, let, let me just resend P1, P2, P3, P4. Now the coupling also depends on P3 minus P, uh, P1 and the propagator or the photon also depends on P3 minus P1. See the thing? Now you can also do the opposite process. The opposite may no longer. P1, P2, P3, P4. So there are two diagrams here because they are not uh, fermions. These uh, diagrams just add up here. There is no anti symmetrization of the states so they add up okay uh, uh, now uh, this is a t channel and this is a e channel uh, now let's look into a little bit more detail uh, now for example uh, let's take one diagram say the t channel diagram Five plus, five plus, five plus, five plus, Q, P1, P2, P3, P4. So the amplitude of this diagram will start uh, with, say, because the initial in, in and out states are essentially the wave functions are just. Uh, uh, they don't have, uh, they're just unity, they don't have anything else. So, so the amplitude will start with the momentum. So this will be uh, I E P3 nu minus P1 nu, then dot P4 mu nu minus P2 nu by q square is p3 minus p1 whole square. So this is just square. Now you see that this amplitude is very simpler compared to the um, um, QD case. In the QD case, you have to write them in terms of uh, uh, say the spinors and the spinors have to be converted uh, meaning, uh, meaning you have to write uh, say for example in the case of QD then you have to take the M square uh, meaning, uh, you have, typically have to write it in terms of M squares and the M squares you have to write a uh, sandwich uh, then take something called the Casimir trick and then you will do that in your assignment so and then you have to apply the completeness relations and also use the projection of um, in some cases say for example then use u bar is equal to war u bar u bar v is equal to war all the normal relations and also the uh, completeness relations and then you get the momentum structure of the field amplitude in this case the momentum structure is much clearer so this just goes as uh, 
e squared by p squared, essentially. That's it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, if you look at uh, the pion scattering, it is almost like this. So, there is a pion scattering of this particular type. Um, then you have the other diagram. There is no anti symmetrization. But the coupling, the main difference is the coupling is momentum dependent. So this is the momentum dependence comes from coupling. Okay, instead of the wave function, the momentum dependence comes from the coupling. Almost uh, roughly, okay. That's the difference. Now, the this is so, but there is no higher order process which is possible. Uh, meaning, this uh, no, uh, no, what about okay? Let me, so, this is pion pion scattering. Now, you can also draw the same things, like for example, uh, pair annihilation, say, uh, uh, say pi plus pi minus. Not uh, pair annihilation, pi plus pi minus going to Baba scattering equivalent, pi minus going to pi plus pi minus. In this case, too, you'll have a diagram in terms of this. So, this diagram is uh, there, exactly like in QD except that there is no spin in the initial and states, okay. So then there is a momentum dependence at this particular vertices. So this is P1, P2, P3, P4, you have to write down this momentum dependence. This is Q and the Q sums over, okay. Then there is the other diagram, which is the pi plus equals to pi plus and the pi minus goes to pi minus. P1, P2, P3, P4. Okay, this is uh, the diagrams uh, analogous to Baba scattering. Now, you will ask the question, where does this second vertex come, say for the example. So, for example, the second vertex is second order, higher order coupling constant, okay. So, this will start uh, playing the role, uh, let's say for example, in process. So, you can do the same thing for Baba scattering, Mono scattering, stuff like that, okay. Then, if you have a process, like for example, pi plus, uh, so if you have a process, of this type, so this is E square, this is E square, so whereas this amplitude I m is proportional to E square, this amplitude I m is proportional to E power. So this is P1, P2, P3, P4, like this. Like a Baba scattering, okay, but this is higher order in proportion. Okay. Analogous to Baba scattering, this is not Baba scattering, Baba scattering is more defined for QD, meaning electrons and this thing, but this is the analogous of Baba scattering, uh, analogous but higher order because in coupling constant
So this is where the second coupling constant comes. Each of the coupling uh, gives you a factor e square. So e square, e square gives me e power 4 in the amplitude. Uh, now let's look at uh, what this. Uh, uh, okay, now there are issues with this uh, higher order corrections, and uh, we had to deal with them. So the coupling, so there is a systematic way of dealing with them. So whereas this appears automatically in the in the in the Q, QCD in the scalar QD Lagrangian, this higher order term. Okay, this higher order term appears automatically in the scalar uh, scalar fury Lagrangian, but it only contributes to processes at higher order. So it is just uh, so. But Baba scattering has uh, two contributions. So the Baba uh, the pi plus pi minus going to okay. Okay. So the pi plus pi minus. What I mean is that pi plus pi minus going to pi plus pi minus. So if you write amplitudes, so this will be a term which will be proportional to e square and then there is a term which is proportional to e power 4. Okay, so this we call it, call it m0, so this we can call it as m, uh, m. Okay, we are already using uh, e4, uh, so this will be, so let me call it as uh, M prime, say for example, or M, it is preferable to call it M1 in a capital A form and whatever. Okay, so M1 we call it as a three level contributions. These are called one loop contributions. Okay, but this, okay, so why these are called one loop? Because here, this thing looks like a loop. So this looks like a loop. Say for example, this looks like a loop. Okay. So photon or something. So there are issues. Okay. So these are called one loop contributions. This looks like a loop. So, but okay. Um, so the series in perturbation series in general goes as I n goes as e square. That's e power four. That's so on so essentially e power six and so on so. So this is a series in alpha. Alpha is equal to e square bracket five. So any QD process is a series in the coupling constant. represented in terms of alpha. So when alpha is equal to 1, okay, so then alpha, uh, so this amplitude essentially is alpha plus alpha square plus alpha cube and so these are three level one loop, two loop. So n principle there will be an nth loop contribution because alpha is very very small compared to one. This series converges, okay? Because alpha is very very small compared to one, this series converges. So we are not really bothered about uh, this uh, uh, meaning unless there are some extremely highly refined experiments which can uh, measure this process essentially. Many, many measure, uh, if you have very highly uh, refined process okay, uh, which are measured at a very high precision, okay, only then we will be worried about this uh, nth loop contributions, many uh, highly process. This series is a convergent series. Okay, this is a very, very, okay. Um, Vague statement, okay. Um, it's not even completely correct because it's a 
Mm. Okay. Um, alpha is uh, small, so it's much smaller than one. So this you would think that this is a convergent series. So you could work. It depends also on the process, and there could be some process. Then it could be complicated. But anyway, for most process, it, it's, uh, we only have to worry about one loop or two loop or something like so and so. We don't really worry about the more and more and higher process, higher order process. Okay, how does these loops appear? So let's just look at uh, some of these loops. Okay, higher order process for the process which I already looked at. Let's just take uh, uh, the first thing we have to look at is the coupling itself. Okay, the coupling itself. So let's look at uh, there are three. Let's go back to QD rather than to scalar QD. QED. Three main one loop process. Now, this is a summary of uh, several years of work on QD. Okay. The point about QD is that now let's just take, uh, so just to summarize, why, why do I say there are only three main processes in one loop process in QD? So the reason is that one would be very confused. So let's just take a process like, say, uh, molar scattering. Okay, e minus, E minus, E minus, E minus. This is a photon. Okay. Now I want to say I want to compute order alpha. As this is order alpha is one three level. I want to compute for order alpha square because I want to measure the uh, the molar scattering at a very very high precision. So now I want to see what is all the order alpha square um, corrections. So I'll have diagrams. This alpha, this alpha because I had to put in coupling wherever it's possible so e minus e minus e minus e minus then i'll put here okay this is slightly close okay directly on the vertex essentially then i put it in the center pair emulation say for example so there is a this is a kind of diagram Okay, then I can put this, say for example, these ones, okay, these ones, uh, these red ones, say for example, the red ones, uh, the one uh, the one with the red dot. I can put it on all the four legs here. Then I can put it on this vertex, uh, okay. Then I can put it on this vertex, this vertex. So this and also in between the uh, the photon line, like for example. So for each process, it looks like there are several diagrams at order alpha square. These are all the diagrams at order alpha square, say for example. How many diagrams we have at order alpha square? So the one diagram, this is four diagrams. Then you have two diagrams of this type. Then another diagram of this type. So to order alpha square, you already have seven diagrams for this thing, and you are not sure whether you have finished all the process. Essentially, meaning are you sure that you have taken into consideration all the uh, possible diagrams or not. So this led to actually um, a lot of investigation and it has been concluded that you don't, uh, if you do three particular diagrams, I meaning if you put in three particular diagrams at every order, say for example in order alpha square, there are only three particular, that's the reason why I said there are only three main one loop process. If you do only three particular diagrams in QED, okay, you will get all the process nicely classification. All the process, I meaning you have a nice classification 
of all possible one loop diagrams in QED if you just take care of in consideration only three particular one loop process, meaning three particular one loop diagrams. So you just so the uh, prescription is that if you want to get all the one loop diagrams, you take into consideration three one loop things and put it wherever uh, start with the tree level diagram, put these three one loop diagrams uh, wherever that is possible. So okay. So uh, what are these are? These are these are so the first one is uh, self financial. So wherever there is a fermion line, okay, in in or out or anything, you replace it with a, this particular diagram. Okay. Then second one is vacuum polarization. It's called vacuum polarization. All of these things have really nice physical means you, you can do. So vacuum polarization means wherever there is a photon propagator. And this also holds for fermion line. It, it could be a propagator, it could be anything. Okay, that's a fermion. Okay, so and then photon line. So the photon would have an electron positron pair. So the first one is the electron emits a photon and this photon comes back to itself. We will see each of them in a second actually in a greater detail perhaps in the next lecture. Um, then in the second case there is a photon, this photon emits an electron positron pair then absorbs it and comes back to itself. Photon. Okay and the third one is vertex correction. So the vertex correction is normally you have photon, electron, electron, gamma. So this is vertex which is IE gamma mu. Now this has to be replaced by a correction. So this is the main three things. So if you have any process, so you just make sure you start with the tree level diagram. Say for example, in this case, so you start with this particular diagram. Okay. In this particular diagram, then apply these three things. First, apply the self energy for every fermion line. Then for every photon, you write down the vacuum polarization. And for every vertex, you add the vertex correction. You have the all one loop corrections. That is the most wonderful thing about QED. So if you want to get order alpha square, okay. So the uh, algorithm is uh, so it's take the tree level diagram. Then apply three things. So vacuum polarization, vertex correction, and self energy. So then you have the order alpha square corrections for this process okay for this part so you have to do it for the both the, say if the tray level process has two diagrams you have to do it for the two diagrams okay so for every diagram for every for every tree level diagram you apply this vacuum polarization vertex correction self energy and you get order alpha square diagrams okay so these are called higher order corrections to QED. So for example, these are true for any quantum field theory. For every quantum field theory, because it's a perturbative theory, you start with the three level diagrams, which is just order alpha and coupling constant, but there could be other higher order corrections, okay, which could be important. 
okay so uh, okay so so let's uh, okay i'll stop here i'll stop with this uh, definition of the higher order corrections and uh, maybe uh, we'll be doing a couple of more lectures extra on qd itself because i want this to be uh, this is not there in the uh, schedule but uh, uh, but we'll do a couple of uh, extra lectures in qd just to get the uh, picture about what are these higher order corrections and uh, uh, what are the problems with that and what are their implications essentially i just want to cover at least maybe one lecture may not be two lectures just to give the physical picture of the importance of this this will be useful for us to understand um, other interactions also okay so i'll stop here today's lecture and then let's see actually okay so thank you